Estrogen dominance can cause all kinds of issues like water retention, stubborn weight, bloating, mood swings, and fatigue. In severe cases, it can even increase your risk of estrogenic cancers. Add to that all these xenoestrogens in our environment and you have the perfect recipe for hormonal imbalances. But the good news is that with the right approach, you can eliminate excess estrogen pretty easily. So that's what I will show you in this video. To start off, let's go over how your body eliminates estrogen if everything works fine. That helps you understand where there might be bottlenecks that lead to estrogen buildup. The whole process takes three phases that happen mostly in the liver. In phase one, the estrogen needs to be broken down, otherwise it cannot be eliminated. Your liver uses enzymes called cytochrome P450 enzymes to convert estrogen into either good or bad byproducts. The good byproducts are called 2-hydroxyestrone and the bad ones are called 4-hydroxyestrone or 16-alpha-hydroxyestrone. You don't need to remember these names, but what you do need to know is that some people have genetic variations that make them more likely to produce higher levels of the harmful estrogen byproducts. So they're more likely to produce 4-hydroxyestrone or 16-alpha-hydroxyestrone instead of the good 2-hydroxyestrone. Later on, I will show you what nutrients you can take to nudge your liver into producing more 2-hydroxyestrone. If phase 1 isn't supported correctly, your body may be left with too many bad reactive estrone metabolites. These harmful metabolites can cause oxidative stress and increase the risk of oxygen-related issues, like hormonal imbalances or the cancer we talked about earlier. Once phase 1 is done, the metabolites must be neutralized and prepared for elimination. Your liver attaches molecules like methyl, sulfate, or glucuronic acid to these metabolites, making them less reactive, more water-soluble, and ready to leave your body. If this phase is sluggish, estrogen can also build up, even after phase 1. And then there is phase 3, the elimination phase. This happens so your body can finally get rid of all the broken down and converted estrogen. It is excreted through your urine or your stool, depending on the route your body chooses. Here, you want to make sure to have enough water in your system to flush everything out via your kidneys, or enough bile to flush it out via your stool. Regular bowel movements are also super important, since you don't want to be constipated during a detox. Great, now that we talked about all this theory, what does it look like in practice? What nutrients can you use to improve your natural estrogen elimination? Let's again go through each of the three steps and I will give you the necessary nutrient cofactors for each. Being low in one or more of them can create bottlenecks, which you definitely want to avoid. Okay, so again, phase one breaks down and converts estrogen. Like I just said, this phase prepares estrogen for further detoxification in phase two by converting it into more reactive metabolites. These metabolites can either be beneficial or harmful, depending on the pathway chosen. To favor the good estrogen route, you can use the supplement DIM, diendolyl methane. It encourages the metabolism of estrogen via the 2-hydroxyestrone pathway, which is less estrogenic and less harmful. Certain vitamins are also super important here, especially B6 in its bioactive form P5P. It is needed for the cytochrome P450 enzymes to function correctly. On top of that, antioxidants like vitamin C and vitamin E help neutralize the harmful free radicals that are generated by phase 1 reactions. Once estrogen has been broken down, in phase 2 the resulting metabolites need to be bound to something else so they can be safely eliminated. The most important liver pathway for this is the methylation pathway where a methyl group is added to the estrogen metabolites, making them less reactive. For this, the body obviously needs methyl groups, which come from nutrients like the amino acid methionine or its more potent form, SAMe. TMG, trimethylglycine, is also a good methyl donor. Many B vitamins like B6, B12, and B9 are also critical cofactors in the methylation process, so make sure to not be deficient in them either. Another detox pathway that can eliminate estrogen metabolites is the sulfation pathway. Here, a sulfate group is added to make everything more water-soluble. For this, your body needs sulfur-containing amino acids, which again includes methionine, but also cysteine and taurine. 
Sulfur-rich foods like onions, garlic, and cruciferous vegetables are also very helpful here. If you ever supplemented a sulfur-containing amino acid and your pee smelled very strong afterwards, this pathway was activated through the supplement. And lastly, there's one more liver pathway called glucuronidation, which can also help eliminate estrogen. I will talk about it in more detail in the next phase, which is phase three, elimination. In phase three, conjugated estrogen metabolites are excreted through your urine or your stool. This last step is all about the safe transport of the final estrogen conjugates from the liver out of your body. Here you want to make sure to not be constipated and to have enough water in your system to flush everything out. Nutrient cofactors for phase three include fiber, which helps bind estrogen in the gut and therefore helps in its elimination, taurine, which is key for making bile in the first place, and a supplement called calcium deglucurate. Basically what can happen is that the estrogen that wants to leave your body sits in the gut for too long an enzyme present there called beta-glucuronidase can break down the bonds made in phase two, which means the estrogen will be released again and can be reabsorbed. That means your body will have to detox it all over again, leading to more hormonal imbalances. To keep this from happening, you can take calcium deglucurate. It blocks the enzyme and therefore makes sure the estrogen doesn't get reabsorbed. And there you have it. That's the complete detox pathway for excess estrogen. I know it sounds complicated, but if you really want to boil it down, the most important player is probably vitamin B6 in its bioactive form P5P. It is involved in both phase one and two and really important for hormonal balance. Some people get green or bright yellow pee from just taking P5P, which is a sign that your body is finally flushing out excess estrogen. Like I said before, you can also supplement DIM to favor the good estrogen route in phase one, but it is optional. If you take either DIM or P5P and you feel like something is being stirred up but cannot leave your body, you probably have a deficiency in a nutrient needed for the phase two reactions. So for methylation, sulfation, or glucuronidation. In that case, make sure to cover all the nutrients necessary for these reactions. So getting enough sulfur and methyl groups. For phase three, you really just need to have regular bowel movements and drink enough water. And optionally, you can also take calcium deglucurate so the estrogen doesn't get reabsorbed, but it's not a must. Again, a clear sign that you're eliminating estrogen is that your pee or sometimes even your poop turns greenish or bright yellow. Vitamin B2 has also the ability to brighten your pee, but it's a different color that is unrelated to detox. It's usually a little more orange, so keep that in mind. As always, be careful and start slow. If you bombard your system with phase one agents like P5P, but are missing the building blocks for phase two, you can create bottlenecks. So start with low doses and see how your body reacts. One last thing I need to talk about before we end this video is that to fix estrogen dominance for good, you also always need to fix your copper overload. Copper overload increases estrogen retention because it interrupts all the liver detox pathways we discussed in this video. High copper levels, especially together with low zinc, will force your body to hold on to more estrogen than it should. Unbound copper also promotes oxidative stress, which can further burden your liver and slow down the detoxification process. People who have been estrogen dominant for years basically always also have a copper issue that needs to be addressed. I talk about copper problems in more details in other videos on my channel, but keep this in the back of your mind, it is very important. 